Are we ready? Yeah. Are you sure you're ready for this? I, actually, hold on yeah. a second. Let me just let me just fix. Well, the, no, uh, you don't. It's it's already. Set, I, I set no, it up before we did anything. I think. So you don't have to change. Oh, right, this one. No, no. Oh, 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 yeah, oh. Okay. You know what? I, just for, forget it. I'll just I'll host it. You you operate the camera. Let's just go okay, back to the sure, normal yeah, way of doing things. What's uh, what's this video about again? SD cards. Oh, no. <laughs> right now, I remember why you're doing this. <laughs> okay, let's go. Cooler Master's Case Mod World Series is your opportunity to show off your modding skills and win great prizes. Entries close February 7th, 2015. Click now to learn more. Hey guys, what's up? Brandon here. So SD cards, they're boring, right? Linus obviously thought so, but they're way more exciting than you probably realize. Mine's changed? No? Okay, fine. But onto my actual point. SD cards are one of the most important things I personally use on a day-to-day -day basis. And while I get some flack for the number of them I've collected over the years, I've, if I didn't have them, I wouldn't be able to do my job. So learning about them for me was a worthwhile investment. And I'm going to share some of that knowledge with you guys. To start with, we need to demystify some of the confusing numbers and letters associated with the different classes of SD cards, because there's a lot of them. Class four, class six, class 10, UHS one, UHS three. Does your brain hurt yet? Let's break it down. Each of these numbered classes represents an increase in the minimum write speed in megabytes that a card can handle with UHS one and UHS three denoting the most recent ultra high speed cards. Recently, there's been a lot of hype about consumer devices that can shoot 4K video and 4K support in SD cards, which is why the UHS-3 standard was introduced and is the focus of our video today. Does it matter? Do I need a UHS-3 card to shoot 4K video? Well, I wanted to know and I also wanted more SD cards to play with, so I asked Linus if I could put in a few sample requests, and he said, "Ah, uh, yeah, I guess, as long as you do the benchmarking on them. So I did. I ended up with nine cards in total, and I ran a number of different benchmarks, including Crystal Dismark, as well as some real world testing on a Canon 60 DSLR and our lovely Panasonic GH4, which is a 4K 30 FPS capable camera. These two cameras will be amongst the most demanding cameras that can run on SD cards with the higher performance options like our FS700, requiring SSD or proprietary media, something that you can see in this video here. So how did we do? Well, the numbers speak for themselves. Most cards performed in Crystal Dismark as expected within the range of their rating. Benchmarking was done in an MSI GS70 with the built-in card reader, which I used out of convenience when I observed its results were pretty much identical to the one we were getting with the standalone Kingston USB 3 reader. Now, Crystal Dismark is only a synthetic benchmarking software, and those numbers are not necessarily representative of real-world performance, where other factors like camera former can come into play. So on to our real world tests. For the GH4 test, I shot multiple 30 second and one minute clips on each card. The first clip is in 4K at 30 FPS, shooting at a bitrate of 100 megabits per second. The second clip is in 1080p at 30 FPS, shooting in a very stressful bitrate of 200 megabits per second. I was astonished to discover that every single card in our roundup worked perfectly with the GH4. I did a combination of static shots with a slow pan and tilt with each card. When playing back the footage in Premiere, none of them had any drop frames. Moving on to the Canon 6D test, I shot 30 raw stills per card using the burst shooting mode. Here are my camera settings. To give a visual representation of this, I recorded audio of the shutter during the test. The audio bunches that you see here are the 18 raw stills that can be taken within the camera's buffer, and every spike after that is the following picture leading up to a total of 30. To my surprise, the Sony card came in the slowest in this test, even with its higher read write speed compared to the lower end A Data and Kingston cards with SanDisk cards taking the win with very solid performance in the shortest amount of time. So conclusion time, is one SD card really better than another? Yes. Is it absolutely necessary to have a UHS-3 card for 4K video? The short answer seems to be no for now. While only half the cards in this test are classified as UHS-1, they all managed to have high enough speeds to handle the 100 to 200 megabit bit rates of the GH4's recording modes. But in future cameras, we might see higher supported bit rates and you'll need to be careful to get the card that can handle the right speeds to match. It should be noted that if you're shopping that read speeds are far less important since they'll only come into play when ingesting footage that you've already shot, something that is rarely the bottleneck with our workflow. 
So thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys thought of the video. If you enjoyed it, if you want to see me talk about tech on the other side of the lens more, Linus said he would pay for me to go to NAB this year. So please leave lots of honest feedback under the video. I really want to go to NAB. So even if you hated it, you probably should tell him that you loved it and- oh, All right, 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 all right. It's, it's, yeah, it's getting pathetic over there. So guys, like he did say though, please do leave comments if you enjoyed Brandon's first on-camera appearance ever. He really is our resident expert when it comes to this stuff. And uh, we really appreciate you guys watching this video. And we also really appreciate our sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club is the way to get inexpensive, high quality shaving supplies delivered directly to your door for only a few bucks a month. It's available in a variety of territories, including the USA, Canada, and New Zealand, and their pricing is extremely reasonable, basically just factoring in the additional costs associated with, well, you know, shipping all these different places and adjusting for the currency of these different regions. Now, they don't just have razors. They've also got shaving cream. They've got, well, I shouldn't say cream because it's more of a butter. It goes on clear so you can see what you're doing. They've got their aftershave and they've got their, then this is all always a fan favorite, One Wipe Charlies, which are peppermint scented butt wipes for men. Visit dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus to sign up and start shaving time and shaving money. It's one of those things, shaving time and shaving money. I get flack from you guys when I do the shave time, shave money thing. And when I do save time, save money, I feel kind of bad because their slogan is shave time, shave money, even though it's a bit of a cheesy joke, but they're kind of cheesy guys. Actually very good guys. Anyway, you guys are good guys too. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it sucked. Leave a comment if your feelings are more complicated than this, which I'm sure they probably are given we like did a host swab here on you out of completely freaking nowhere. As always guys, check the link in the video description. You Excuse me, you can buy a cool t-shirt like this one, you can uh, give us a monthly contribution, or you can change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code so we get a small kickback whenever you buy stuff. That kind of thing helps us out a lot. Thanks again for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.